Today we're building an ICE battery, talking about BTUs and how they're calculated, and then going into why a phase change is required, especially for an ICE battery or a thermal battery in general. I'll then go into connecting my chiller up to my ICE battery, measuring how effective it is at generating ICE. Capping off our time together will be an explanation of EER, or energy efficiency ratio, and what I'm gonna do next to improve on my thermal battery. Stay tuned. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see the next version of this project. Here we are one step closer. Went ahead and bought a 330 gallon tote and we're going to use this as our ice storage container. I'm going to go ahead and cut an access hole. I was originally thinking I was going to cut the whole top off. I would like to keep as much of the tote intact as possible. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this side over here. I'll probably be able to build like uh, three or four layers worth of the chiller tubes, the PEX tubing and be able to slip it in and pex crimp it together inside the actual tank instead of having the whole cartridge ready and then drop the whole thing into the tank. It might be more, worth than, more work than it's worth, more trouble than it's worth, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it that way. I was gonna utility knife it, and uh, this plastic is actually fairly tough. So I figured I'd just grab the circular saw. I can always um, pull out the bits that are left inside. This is actually a brand new tank. I got it for, uh, I bought a, 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 this was a 30, 330 gallon for uh, 60 bucks and he threw in another 275 gallon that doesn't have the valve at the bottom. Um, and that one was a used tank, but it's all cleaned out. So it's like, that's that's pretty cool. 330 gallon tank for 60 bucks. And I get a free 275 gallon tank, I'll take it. What we're gonna do with the 275 gallon, I don't know. I'll talk to the wife first. She enabled me, she said we can get it. I figure I can always put it out by the shed until we need it. We could always do some water collection off of a roof or something, right? Anyway, let's get this cut off as soon as I get my personal protective equipment on. I think it's got a bit of a bend in it, so it's pinching my blade. Let's see if I can relieve it over here some. Okay, so that's what it was. Check this out. There's a big old nub in here. That's what I was trying to saw through. I don't know what the purpose of that was, but it's not all the way across, it's just right there. So I didn't consider it beforehand, but the, um, the outlet nub right there might get in the way a little bit of my bottom couple of rings. They might be a little um, smaller than the rest of them. To, to clear that. It's probably probably six inches, eight inches tall. Get you up top. Alright, ready? You did it! What are you doing in there? I'm playing in there. Yeah? Yeah. How's it look? It looks good. You think it'll work well? Yeah. Does it smell funny? Yeah. Yeah, it does. You ready to get out? Um, yeah. All right, give me your hands. We're going to make ice in here. Oh, I'm going to help you. You want to help me? Yeah. You want to go in the garage and get some foam with me? Yeah. Let's go pick some foam out. Alright, so there's a bunch of foam up there, but there's also some foam up at the front of the garage. Let's go to the front of the garage. Okay, let's do it. Alright, here's a piece. Can you take this piece over there? Is that too big? Yeah. Why don't you do this one? Can you do that? Yeah. You got it? Mm-hmm. Good job. Can you carry it to the back porch? Yeah. You're doing it. I'm going to drop it. Oh, don't drop it yet. You're almost there. You're almost there. Can you put it up there? Yeah. Good job.
So the goal this morning is to take a roll of half inch PEX and I'm going to use this half inch PVC to index it. We're going to create a just about a three foot wide circle um, and it's going to coil in and then coil back out. So it'll be two layers. This will allow me to freeze water. So I'm going to run the antifreeze through these coils. Rose is helping me this morning get my zip ties out for the project. Did you get any out yet, Rose? Looks, it looks like, yeah, you got a few. I already built one. Let me show you what that one looks like. So this is the first one. So you'll see that I've got the, the blue one inch PEX coming down and reducing to a one half inch PEX. So it enters the coil here on the outside, coils all the way in, and then you'll see here, it runs from the underside coil to the top side and then coils from the inside back out and then it hits this return pipe that I've conveniently made red. So the idea here is I will create another one of these what I'll call cassettes, cut off the, the one inch PVC, drop a T in here that goes from a one inch PEX down to a half inch PEX and do the same thing over again. So I've got Can enough supplies. My pack? Yes sir. Okay. So I've got enough supplies to have two of these cassettes and that'll give me about probably six inches deep worth of cooling tubes and we'll be able to get a real test because this will be about 300 feet worth of half inch PEX that I'll be able to run antifreeze through where my previous test, my previous proof of concept only had about 50 feet worth of hose and it was a rubber hose which may be more insulating value than um, PEX. So this will allow me to create the ice faster um, and probably more efficiently. I'm going to show you what I did to create this cassette. So we're going to start off here with my half inch PVC. This is going into a 330 gallon tote. I need this PVC to be about 34 inches. That's right there. And then grab my cutting tool that is definitely out of reach so that we don't cut any fingers off. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and create the second one. The second one's going to be at 37 inches because the toad is not actually square. This will be a bit of an ob be a bit of an oblong situation. And then I will need a second 34 inch to mimic what I did previously. So is that one? This is 34 inches right here. Okay. And how tall is this one? You want me to measure it once I cut it? It's 15 and a quarter inch. Oh! I have got two 34 inch pieces can, and a 37 inch. Oh no, I need to put those away. Because those are dangerous. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're spacing these okay. holes at okay. one and a half inches. Okay. okay. Okay? So right there, there. There and it just makes it easier to mark it first and then drill. <clears throat> and this is what she's been doing all along is using this to index the next one. Look at all these cars here. They got I got one of these. Rose, no 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 no. You know what? I think that Rose is gonna want to play with them if they're out here on the floor. No 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 no. Okay, so now we've got our marks at one and a half inches all along these tubes. I'm gonna go ahead and drill it out with, let's see what size bit this is. This is a 3 16ths. This is a 3 16ths build it, drill bit, which works well for these zip ties. I've probably gone through 50 of them or so and one of them broke. I wanted to talk real quick about BTUs, British Thermal Units and how that's calculated. If you have one pound of water and you have one degree of difference, so I'm gonna say we're going from 55 degrees down to 54 degrees, it takes one BTU to do that. So one pound of water, one degree difference, one BTU. So if you want to take one pound of water and there's there's like 8.3 pounds of 
of water per gallon. So we've got one gallon of water, which is eight pounds. We're going to take that from a 50 degrees down to 32 degrees. So one pound of water, 52 to 32. So that's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That is going to be 20 degrees Fahrenheit times eight pounds. So that's 160 BTU worth of energy to get one gallon of water from 53, 52 degrees to 32 degrees. If you had to do that for storing energy, that would take a lot of water. That would be a very large thermal battery. But say you actually freeze the water. To go from 32 degrees liquid to 32 degrees freezing takes 144 BTU. If we have that same one gallon of water at eight pounds times 144 that comes out to 1152 BTU to phase change from liquid to a solid so that's where we can really get our space efficiency here. So if we had 330 gallons times 8.3 pounds per gallon, that's 2,739 pounds of water. And if we're able to do a 20 degree drop between 52 and 32, that's 54,780 BTUs. On to the next piece. We've got the chiller that I have in my other video. This is sitting here. We've got my tote here. I need to drop the the coils of half inch PEX down into the tote and I need to run my pump through some tubing to said coils. I want to cut a hole in this insulation that I'm going to use for the lid for my glycol bath. So I need it right there. Run that here. Should do just fine. Oh good, it tapered down at the bottom, so probably fit through nicely. There you go. Right. Then oh, this will be nice because I'll be able to kind of control where the water comes in a little better. Um so I think what I want to do is if the pump's there, then I'll have the incoming water, or the return water here. So let me go ahead and mark that. Somewhere right about here. Alright. We got our two holes. I realize it doesn't fill the container as much as would be handy, but that's all right. Containers are cheap and PEX is cheap. If I needed to run two of these instead of one, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. In fact, it would be even better in the sense that you could run two in parallel, um, both with one inch PEX, and so the amount of restriction caused would be even less. All right, so let me get this situated. I also lost a piece of PVC in there. I should have zip tied it in. And so I think they're kind of, well, they're probably fine as is, but it'd be nice if they were sitting a little bit more compact in there. All right, so this blue pipe pex here, this one inch. Conveniently, this uh, braided tubing fits right inside of it. And this is the stuff coming out of the pump, so it's going to be the coldest. And we'll be sitting into the blue. Hot tip. Insulation is a lot cheaper if you buy it as a pool noodle especially at the end of the season. So this stuff will fit three quarter or one inch packs, pipe. Nicely. And it was only, I think it was like 50 cents for a 42 inch piece. Right then, I've got my 
supply line going in, and get my return line connected here. I believe I've got everything plumbed in. We've got the big old cassette of half inch pipe inside our tote for running our antifreeze through. Uh, we've got our chiller down here. We've even got an insulated lid sitting on it. We've got our pipes in and out of the tote insulated. So we need to fill up with liquids. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the antifreeze first and start running the compressor just to make sure that my a uh, mixture of ethylene glycol to water is okay. I'm going to be diluting it some. And then while that's chilling down the antifreeze, I'll start throwing some water into the 330 gallon tote. So it seems like it's still got a lot of air bubbles in there, so I'm just running it a while to see if I can work those air bubbles out and make sure I've still got enough water level in there. I think I'm going to go ahead and kick the compressor on though and start chilling this before I fill the uh, main tank with water. I think it reset itself. So let's, let's go look up the manual real quick. Alright, so this is straight from the Bayite website for the temperature controller. So what we're going to do is set the set value. Uh, at the temperature that we want the water to be, I say the water, the antifreeze mixture, right? That's where this temperature probe is going to be. And then the cooling differential, the CD, is the how hot we'll allow the, the coolant to get before we start cooling it back down to the set value. So, in practical purposes, so we hit this set button. I say hit, we're going to hold it. So this is the set value. We're going to set that to... Let's, let's go down to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the heating differential, cooling differential. So we'll allow it to get up to, um, what would that be, 26 before we kick the compressor back on again. So 18 to 26 is gonna be the temperature of the antifreeze. First we gotta drop our temperature probe in, right? So this is showing our current temperature probe temperature. So if I hold this, it'll go up. Probably, you know, end up somewhere around 98.6. Drop it down the side here for now. Into our water. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna plug in the compressor. And then we'll turn it back on again. Here we go. Apparently something is malinstalled. Let me fix that. Let's try that again. That sounds better. Yes, we are starting to get cold, so the compressor is still working. So that temperature should start dropping rather quickly. There's really not a whole lot of mass for it to uh, drop the temperature on. It's just the uh, few gallons worth of antifreeze that is in the system. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and start filling the tote with water and then I'll continually monitor this antifreeze mixture to make sure it's not freezing up or slushing up on me. Okay, so we have the antifreeze filled up. We have 45 gallons that I have put into the 330 gallon tote. So just a little bit, but we're just testing right now. We've got about six inches worth of um, coils in there. So probably about six or seven inches worth of water. I could probably put a little bit more. I'm gonna go with this for now. So here's what it looks like in here. Got some water covering those coils. There we have it. My set point is 18 and my cooling differential is eight. So that puts me that my, my antifreeze is gonna be between 18 and 26 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to shut off the power strip to plug in my compressor again. And turn it back on. Well, here we are, this is the next day. Last night it actually had plenty of ice around all the tubing. Let me show you guys that real quick as I walk into the darkness. Um, let's see what we've got here. The ice seems to have just about bridged between each of the PEX um, lines, which is what I was aiming for. So that seems to have worked. Now, last night, it was at about the same amount of ice and we were at about 3.3 kilowatt hours used. I'll probably use that number for my calculations, but I'm gonna go ahead and drain off the water and see how much ice I created. I'm gonna go ahead and call that. And it looks like 39 gallons. So what I'm gonna do now just to verify that my calculations were right in adding the water in in the first place is after the ice all melts inside, I'll drain off that water and see if that adds up to the 45 gallons I put in. So that's what it looks like right now. The numbers don't seem terribly good if I only froze six gallons worth of ice. So I don't know, it could be that I need some more um, insulation, make this a little more efficient. Um, but we'll keep messing with it, that's the point, right? So by the end of this video and with all these tests, what we found out was that the EER, which I believe is the energy efficiency rating, that we managed with the chiller freezing that block of ice was about five. Now, what is an EER? EER is basically how much power did it take to cool something or to, I think they just use it for cooling, not for heating. Anyway, this air conditioner was rated at an EER of like 10 and a half or 11 as a normal window unit air conditioner, which is not a bad rating. Um, so getting five with it being a chiller, it's at about half, which it could be expected that it's a little bit less because we're trying to make it so cold. When an air conditioner is running as a normal air conditioner, you're getting the evaporator coils down to almost freezing, but you're not going below freezing. Whereas with what we're doing with the chiller, we were going down into the, what, 18 degree Fahrenheit range, way below freezing. And that's less efficient because the larger difference you have between the outside air with the, the hot coils, the condenser coils, and the inside, which is the chiller or the evaporator coil, the larger that difference, the harder the compressor has to work in order to move heat from one side to the other. So it's expected. But we've got plans for how to make it better. One of the things we're gonna do, and you need to, to hit that subscribe button um, so that you can get notified next time I upload a video. But one of the things we're gonna do is put a higher volume pump on the chiller. So that will get us some more efficiency. Um, something else we're gonna do is a data logger so that I can find out in real time what does increase the efficiency. When I put a flow uh, meter 
on the glyco loop and I put temperature sensors leaving the pump, coming back into the chiller, inside the ice block, on the condenser output, I'll be able to know what's really going on. And that'll give me great data for being able to improve this. Um, so stay tuned. If you liked this, go hit that like button. I'm really curious what you guys think. I'm trying to create some content here, uh, do some projects here that people haven't really done here on YouTube and documented. Um, and I, I say that I say that in a way that I realize that people have done this. It not hasn't necessarily been documented. So I'm really curious, you know, if you've done this or you've been in a commercial setting where this has been done, um, what kind of tips do you have for getting me further along on making this work for real? So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I will see you on the next installment of this project.